you go online, you'll find a whole host of companies that will offer to introduce you to an offshore bank in order to help you open an account. And people sometimes wonder, do I need to pay the $500, the $1,000, the $2,000 to get my foot in the door with a particular bank? I'm going to answer that question in this video. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson. And when you're trying to understand if you need an introduction to open a foreign bank account, the answer, unfortunately, is like so many other answers in the offshore world, and that is it depends. Here's the 37,000 foot view. If you're trying to date a supermodel, you're gonna need a special way in. You're, you're gonna need an invitation to a party. You're gonna need to know someone who's gonna introduce you. You're gonna need some kind of special strategy more than you would to meet the barista at Starbucks, okay? So for a personal bank account, I often think that introductions aren't necessary unless you're going for that supermodel. There are certain banks in Switzerland, for example, that say, not only do we not want US persons, we don't want people who do this, that, or this, we want you to have a million Swiss francs. Oh, and by the way, you should know somebody. Uh, in those cases, yes, you may need to know someone if you're trying to get into certain banks in these, you know, quote unquote, supermodel jurisdictions. I quite frankly think that for the average person, for the average entrepreneur that I talk to, six and seven figure income earner, that those supermodel jurisdictions have, they're, they're past their prime. They're like the supermodels of the 70s. It's like banking with Twiggy. This is something that you don't really need anymore. Quite frankly, I'd rather have a banking portfolio of uh, attractive banking destinations like here in Singapore, where you don't need an introduction. You can just go to one of the banks and meet their minimum deposit criteria and they will let you in. They don't have that certain stodginess that to me has gone out of style. Now, there are a few examples of non-supermodel banking jurisdictions where I've been asked for a referral. Uh, for example, I went to uh, SCB Bank in Thailand the first time and they said, nope, can't open an account for you. You're a tourist, you don't have a work permit, we don't wanna deal with you. I eventually went to a friend of mine who lives in Thailand, has been banking with SCB for many years back when they did accept tourists. And he said, you know what? I'll write you a reference letter because my banker says if I do that, then they'll open an account. And so that was able to solve the problem. In reality, if I went to a bank in a country like Thailand or in St. Lucia or something, and they only wanted to accept people through referral, I probably wouldn't really want to bank there because there are so many attractive banking solutions, whether it's in Europe, whether it's in Singapore, even in Hong Kong, where you simply don't need to be introduced for an account on the personal level. Now, the corporate level is a little bit different. If you ever looked up setting up a company in Hong Kong, for example, you'll see that all these company secretaries, they're all competing, you know, who has the lowest price? And they'll often offer an introduction to a banker in Hong Kong. It's almost always HSBC in Hong Kong. Uh, which stopped working years ago, interestingly enough. I think there's still a few people offering that introduction, knowing that you're going to be rejected, or if you're the 1% that's accepted, your account will be closed uh, in all likelihood very soon. So that's not really an introduction. That's just, they'll make a phone call, they have a contact, and they'll just send you into the queue. They'll basically make the appointment for you. An introduction on a corporate level could be beneficial, again, when you're looking for one of the supermodel jurisdictions, but it also could be important when you want to bank uh, onshore. So you know, opening an account at any of these offshore banks in the Caribbean and the Cook Islands in Vanuatu, you don't really need an introduction there. Let's say you have a BVI company um, and you want to go to one of these island jurisdictions, Mauritius, there's many of them. Okay? Now, a lot of those jurisdictions are less and less attractive because the fees are higher um, and you know, people are just worried about the stability in some cases. It doesn't mean that plenty of them aren't stable banks, but people just don't feel as good about them. There's a lot of reasons people don't want to be banking in, you know, some tiny island. So what I often recommend is what I call the onshore off, offshore hybrid. We've talked about this for, for about a year now, where you can get bank accounts onshore. But the challenge is these onshore jurisdictions are becoming more and more challenging. It used to be possible, we talk a lot about Georgia, it used to be possible to get accounts for Hong Kong companies at a bank in Georgia. Then it became possible only with an introduction where you brought all your papers and you had a lawyer who had an in go and do it. Now they almost certainly will refuse you with the exception of if you have some kind of significant business on the ground in Georgia. So maybe you have 
a bunch of employees in Georgia, but your company is offshore. And so perhaps TBC Bank or Bank of Georgia will open an account for you there. So where the introduction could come in handy on the corporate side is if you're trying to bank, uh, again, with a banking portfolio where you don't just want to go and put half a million dollars in Singapore, you'd like to spread out your risk, you'd like to have access to different countries, and you want to go to one of these onshore uh, jurisdictions. By and large, I think that bank account introductions are helpful. I think that if you're a six and seven figure entrepreneur, trying to find the right contact, making the appointment, going through that process, can certainly be a waste of time. Because with some banks, even some of the good banks, like those in Singapore, it can be a bit of a labyrinth. You'll call someone who'll say, sorry, we don't accept companies like yours, or hey, the minimum deposit is this, or sorry, no US citizens. And what people don't understand about banks, whether it's in your own country or offshore, is that the person you talk to is the person who has the responsibility of knowing everything. But often they don't know everything or even anything. And so they'll tell you, no, you can't be accepted, but in reality, you do meet other criteria, and so you just need to keep pushing. What a good introducer will do, and there are a few good ones and many bad ones, but what a good introducer will do is they're going to create a profile, and they're going to present that to the bank in the way that they understand that the bank wants it. Again, we've, we talk a lot about how different countries, different cultures, different institutions work differently and they want to understand how your business works in a different way. They want different kinds of information. And so the introducer would go and say, okay, here's the profile of the business. And they would you know, tell a story about exactly what it is that you do and, and perhaps why the bank should accept you, and they would try their best. Uh, so that could potentially be very interesting. What could also be interesting is that if you wanted to bypass those junior bankers, if you wanted to get past the receptionist, as it were, they can help you do that and potentially get out of the you know, being sold a bunch of stuff by the mass market bankers and just get up to the level where they know who you are, they know what you want to do, and they know uh, what your objectives are. So really, for me, the key of whether you want an offshore bank account introduction or not comes down to time management. What is your time worth? This is a very important question I think every six and seven figure entrepreneurs should ask themselves is, do you want to go in and deal with the junior bankers and be told, no, we don't accept people, even though the bank does accept people, that person just doesn't know. Um, do you want to deal with that labyrinth, which would vary from country to country? In some cases, it's very easy to deal with. In other cases, it's more difficult. So do you want the risk and do you want the time spent on figuring it out? It's really a risk and time management question. Quite frankly, on the personal side, if you're willing to travel, I think you often don't need an introduction. You might want some help to help you make sure that the banker does everything properly if they don't speak English as well. Uh, but really, uh, it comes down to what is your time worth? How much do you want to reinvent the wheel? And that is going to be something that everyone defines differently. Hi, I'm Andrew Henderson from Nomad Capitalist. I wrote this book, which you can find on Amazon to distill a lot of the stuff we talk about in these videos and a lot of the stuff I've learned over the last decade plus traveling all around the world, teaching you about how to legally reduce your taxes, build your personal freedom, and create wealth faster. Definitely get a copy of this book if you want to learn more. Now, if you want to watch more videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel and make sure you click the notifications bell so you never miss one of our new videos with more tips on how to go where you're treated best. And if you're already a six or seven figure entrepreneur and you'd like to put these strategies in place for yourself, go to nomadcapitalist.com and learn about how I can help you.